Assalamu alaikum students. This is your chemistry class. And I'm your teacher, Taima Ashraf. In this part, you are going to learn the further topics of the chapter 8, Chemical Reactivity. In this part of the topic, you are going to learn about the metallic bond and soft and hard metals. Chemical properties and importance of some alkali and alkaline earth metals. You are also going to learn about the inertness of noble metals and their commercial value. Metalloids and their use in modern electronic materials. You are going to learn the physical and chemical properties of non-metals, electronegative character and strength along periodic table. First, you are going to learn about the soft and hard metals. Some metals are soft, for example, sodium, but mostly the metals are hard, like iron. All of you have seen the iron that is hard, but sodium is soft metal. It is so much soft that we can cut it with a knife. The melting point of sodium is much lower than iron, and it is 97.8 degrees centigrade. Its boiling point is 881.4 degrees centigrade. To understand about the soft and hard metal, you should learn about the metallic bond. Metallic bond is traction between metal cations and free valence electrons. Now, how the metal cations are formed? Metal cations are formed when metal atoms gain some amount of energy even at room temperature and lose their valence electrons. When they lose their valence electrons, they form the metal cations. And the valence electrons move freely around the metal cations. So, these metal cations with plus charge develop attraction with the electrons which have the negative charge. If this attraction is strong, then the metallic bond is strong and metal is hard. If this attraction is weak, then the metallic bond is weak and the metal is soft. Difference between sodium and iron. Sodium is a soft metal and iron is a hard metal. Sodium is a soft metal as it has large atomic size and weak metallic bond. While iron is a hard metal as it has small atomic size and strong metallic bond. Metallic bond in sodium is weak because there is only one electron, free valence electron is available from each cation to develop the attraction between the electron and cation to form the metallic bond. As this attraction is weak, so metallic bond is weak and sodium is a soft metal. While in iron, there are many free valence electrons are available from each cation. So, the attraction between the cations and free valence electrons is stronger and metallic bond is stronger as compared to the sodium. That's why iron is hard and sodium is soft. Physical and chemical properties of sodium. Sodium is an important alkali metal. It is silvery white in color and it is a soft metal. It is extremely reactive metal, means it is very reactive metal. It can react with oxygen even in a limited supply. In a limited supply of oxygen, sodium burns to form sodium oxide Na2O. Na2O is a normal oxide in which the charge on oxygen is minus 2. The reaction with oxygen is called burning. But in excess of oxygen means more amount of oxygen, it forms a pale yellow solid, sodium peroxide, Na2O2. Na2O2 is a peroxide because in it, the charge on oxygen is minus 1. As you can see in the equation, that two atoms of sodium are reacting with one molecule of oxygen and forming Na2O2 sodium peroxide. Let's learn the another chemical property of sodium, which will be the answer of think tank question number one as well. Why we should not pick the sodium metal with fingers? As I've told you that sodium is an extremely reactive metal, so it reacts vigorously with water, means quickly with water or falsely with water, and liberate the two chemicals, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, and hydrogen gas, H2, as you can see in the equation. 
This reaction is highly exothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions are those in which heat is released. It is highly exothermic reaction means a lot more of heat is released during this reaction. And that's why it proceeds with light explosion. Because heat produced can burn the hydrogen and explode it. For this reason, sodium metal should not be picked with fingers because it can react vigorously with the moisture of our fingers and burn them by producing the heat and the strong base sodium hydroxide. Importance of sodium. Sodium is an important alkali metal because it has important uses. Sodium, when mixed with potassium, forms an alloy which is liquid. And this alloy is used as a coolant in nuclear reactors. Means, nuclear reactors produce heat and to cool them we use this alloy. Sodium is used in sodium lamps and these sodium lamps are used to illuminate the highways. Means to light the highways. Sodium also used in the production of anti no compound for gasoline. Gasoline is petroleum. Anti no compounds are those compounds which reduce the sound of engine, which is called knocking. So, sodium is used to produce such compounds to improve the quality of gasoline, means petroleum. Physical and chemical properties of magnesium and calcium. Magnesium and calcium are most common alkaline earth metals. They are relatively soft metals, but they are much harder than sodium. As two free valence electrons are available from magnesium and calcium for metallic bonding. But in case of sodium, only one free valence electron is available for metallic bonding. So that's why Magnesium and calcium are harder as compared to sodium. They are also reactive metals, but they are re less reactive than alkali metals because their ionization energies are higher than alkali metals. Magnesium reacts with steam, but calcium reacts with cold water. The temperature of steam is 120 degrees centigrade. It means magnesium requires more temperature or energy to react, but calcium do not. Magnesium reacts with water and form magnesium oxide and hydrogen gas, while calcium reacts with water and form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas, as you can see in the equations. Magnesium reacts with oxygen at high temperature, but calcium reacts with oxygen at room temperature. Again, you notice that magnesium requires more energy or more temperature to react with oxygen. Magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide, while calcium reacts with oxygen to form calcium oxide. You notice that or you observe that the magnesium requires more energy to react. It means magnesium is less reactive than calcium. Importance of calcium. Calcium is an important alkaline earth metal. All of you know that calcium is present in our teeth and bones and it is important for the growth of teeth and bones. Calcium ions are found in all living things. They are involved in the clotting of blood. Means when there is a wound, then when the blood clot over there, then it needs the calcium ions. Otherwise, our blood will not clot. A proper calcium and potassium ion balance is required for normal heart function. If a proper amount of calcium and potassium is not present, then our heart cannot function normally. Importance of magnesium. It is also the answer of exercise question number two, part three. Magnesium is an important alkaline earth metal. The alloy of magnesium with aluminum is used for making frames of automobiles, aircrafts, and spaceship. Means, magnesium and aluminum are both lightweight metals. So, they have an important use for making the frames of the cars, air, aeroplanes, etc. Magnesium burns with a very bright flame. When it burns in the presence of oxygen, it burns with a very bright flame. So it is used for making the photo flash guns. MgOH twice. 
magnesium hydroxide it is a compound of magnesium which is called milk of magnesium and it is used to treat the acidity of the stomach noble metals noble metals are the metals that are relatively difficult to oxidize oxidation means loss of electron means noble metals are the metals we do not lose the electron examples of noble metals copper silver gold and platinum are the noble metals means they do not oxidize or lose electrons and they also do not react with hcl reactivity of noble metals first i will tell you the reactivity of copper and silver and then i will tell you the reactivity of gold and platinum copper and silver are somewhat reactive noble metals that's why they both exist in the free and combined state both react with strong oxidizing agent such as concentrated nitric acid and perchloric acid HNO3 is nitric acid and HClO4 is perchloric acid. They are difficult to oxidize but they react with very strong oxidizing agents. The HNO3 concentrated HNO3 and perchloric acid HClO4 are very strong oxidizing agent which help the copper and silver to lose the electrons. Now I will discuss the reactivity of noble metals gold and platinum. Gold and platinum are very difficult to oxidize. I mean they are very difficult to lose the electrons. So they both exist in the free states. And they can only react with aqua regia. Now what is aqua regia? This is also the answer of exercise question number 8. Aqua regia is a mixture of 3 parts by volume of concentrated HCl. HCl is hydrochloric acid and one part by volume of concentrated HNO3 nitric acid. Means if you want to make 4 ml of aqua regia, you have to mix 30 ml of HCl, concentrated HCl and 10 ml of concentrated HNO3. Gold and platinum only wreck with this aqua regia. Importance of silver. The formula of silver is Ag. It is an important noble metal which has many uses. It is widely used in making jewelry and ornaments. Ornaments are the objects which are used for decoration. It is highly malleable and have beautiful luster means it can be easily changed into the different sh shapes and have beautiful shine. That's why we use the jewelry and ornaments with the silver. Silver is also used for making cooking utensils, means the dishes which are used for cooking are made up of silver. Light sensitive silver halides are used in photographic processes. Silver halides are silver compounds which are sensitive to light. That's why they are used in the photography. In the former times or old times, silver were used for making coins. Importance of gold. The formula of gold is Au. It is an important noble metal. It is highly malleable and have beautiful luster. Means it change into the different sheets easily and have beautiful shine. That's why it is used to make jewelry, flatware and ornaments. Flatware are the objects which are used for eating. In former times, gold was used to make coins. In the old time, the gold was used as coins. Gold alloys are extensively used in dentistry. Gold alloys are the mixture of gold with other metals. So dentists use them in the filling of teeth. Compounds of gold have therapeutic applications. Many compounds of gold like salts of gold are used to treat many diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, which is a disease of joints. 
Importance of platinum. The formula of platinum is Pt. It is an important noble metal because it has wide uses. Platinum is widely used as a catalyst in many industrial processes. Catalysts are the substances which are used to speed up the chemical reaction. For example, in contact process, it is used to prepare 100% pure sulfuric acid H2SO4. Platinum is used as an electrode as a part of hydrogen electrode and in fuel cells. Platinum is used in the catalytic converters of the cars to reduce the air pollution because it is involved in the complete combustion of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide gas. So it reduces the air pollution. Platinum compound cisplatin is used as anti-cancer agent means it is used to treat the cancer. Metalloids. Now I will tell you about the metalloids. Metalloids are the elements that have mixed properties of metals and non-metals. Means they have also the properties of metal as well as the non-metals. The examples of met uh, metalloids are silicon and germanium. The formula of silicon is Si. The formula of germanium is Ge. Importance of metalloids. Metalloids are very important in modern electronic devices like calculators, mobiles, computers. For example, silicon and germanium are very important metalloids which are used to manufacture the computer chips and solar cells. All of you know about the solar cells. These are used to convert the sunlight energy into light energy. What are silicon chips? Do you know what are silicon chips? Silicon chips are simply called chips. They are the microprocessor which can perform all the functions of a computer like the CPU of your computer. They are also the processor. The CPU is the processor of your computer which perform all the functions of your computer and similarly the silicon chips also perform the functions of the computer like the mobile. They are very tiny in size. Means they are very very small in size. A chip is made from a very thin flake of silicon. Means a very small thin piece of the silicon on which a pattern is made by cutting or etching etching is the line like you when you draw the lines with the nail on the glass the very small lines are called etched lines this pattern which is made by etching or cutting is called the integrated circuit and the electron flows through this integrated circuit. You can see an integrated circuit in the picture in which the pattern is made and through this pattern the electron flows in the circuit. Do you know about the harmful effects of strontium-90? Strontium is an alkaline earth metal. Its radioactive isotope strontium-90 is a major product of an atomic bomb explosion. Means when atomic bomb explodes, the strontium-90 is produced in large amount. And when we constantly exposed to the radiations which are produced by strontium-90, means rays emitted by the strontium-90, we can lead to the anemia which is a deficiency of blood and we can lead to the leukemia which is the white blood cancer. Do you know what is a rolled gold? Rolled gold is a very thin layer of gold alloy. Gold alloy is a mixture of gold with other metals. And it is bonded onto another alloys like brass and nickel silver alloy. Science tidbits. Potassium superoxide KO2 is an important chemical which is utilized in the breathing equipments. These breathing equipments are used underground, the water and in the hospitals. Potassium superoxide is formed when potassium reacts in excess of air. When this KO2 potassium superoxide reacts with water, it gives oxygen gas. Like you can see in the equation, KO2 is reacting with water H2O and forming KOH oxygen gas and H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 is the formula of hydrogen peroxide. When we exhale the air, it contains the moisture as well as the carbon dioxide gas. 
the importance of potassium superoxide is that it can also react with the moisture means water and carbon dioxide gas and produce more oxygen means this is very beneficial now you are going to learn about the non metals some examples of non metals are carbon nitrogen oxygen and halogens halogens include the fluorine chlorine bromine iodine acetate now i will tell you about the properties of non metals physical properties as well as the chemical properties physical properties of non metals means how the non metal looks physically or apparently non metals are gases or they are dull brittle solids dull means they are not shiny brittle means they can be broken only one non metal bromine is present in the liquid state they have low melting points and they are bad conductors of heat and electricity because heat and electricity cannot pass through them as no free electrons are available chemical properties of non metals means how the non metals undergo the chemical reaction how they react non metals react by gaining the electron when they gain the electron they gain the negative charge and they form anions that's why the non metals are electronegative means they gain the electron and they form the negatively charged ions electronegative elements for example fluorine fluorine belongs to group 7a it has seven electrons in the valence shell so it needs to complete its octet it needs to complete its eight electron in the valence shell so it needs one more electron it gain that electron a form a fluoride ion with a negative charge now you are going to learn the electronegative character and it is also called the non metallic character the tendency of an element to gain electrons to form anions is called electronegative character means the elements gain the electrons and they form the ions with the negative charge means anions this character is called the electronegative character and as it is a properties of non metal so it is also called a non metallic character as you can see a non metal x is gaining one electron and is forming a anion with a negative one charge why non metals are electronegative means why they tend to gain the electrons why they gain the electrons non metals are electronegative means they gain the electron because they have small atomic size and greater nuclear charge because of the small size and greater nuclear charge there is less distance between the nucleus and the valence shell so when extra electron is added in the valence shell it binds more tightly with the nucleus and that's how the anion will form trends in electronegative character along period nuclear charge are the positively charged protons which are present in the nucleus so where uh, the atomic number increase along the period for example in the third period sodium has 11 protons and magnesium has 12 protons means atomic number is increasing along the period so nuclear charge increasing along the period but the atomic size decreases along a period as we have learned earlier because of which the distance between the nucleus and the valence shell electrons becomes less and when the extra electron is added to the valence shell it will bind more tightly with the nucleus that's why the nuclear character increases along the period when the nuclear charge increases and atomic size decreases for example in the third period sodium is least electronegative while chlorine is most electronegative argon is not reactive in all the periods the halogens are the most reactive elements in the second period fluorine is most reactive 
in the third period chlorine is most active and in the fourth period bromine is most active element means all the halogens are most active elements along their respective periods trends in electronegative character along group atomic size increase down the group as the number of shells increase due to the more atomic size or greater atomic size then distance between the nucleus and valence electron increase so extra added electron will be less tightly held by the nucleus therefore electron active character decrease for example among halogens halogens belong to group 7a fluorine is the most electron negative element because its size is smallest as it has two shells while chlorine has three shells bromine has four shells and iodine has five shells so as the fluorine is smallest in size with two shells so it is the most electron negative element example 8.2 in this example we have to identify the more non metallic element in the a part from nitrogen and oxygen oxygen is more non metallic element non metallic character increases along the period and as oxygen comes after nitrogen in the second period therefore the oxygen is more non metallic in the b part fluorine and chlorine from fluorine and chlorine fluorine is more non metallic as non metallic character is more if the atomic size is smaller so fluorine which has two shells is smaller in size than chlorine which has three shells so that's why fluorine is more non metallic let's do self assessment exercise 8.3 In the first question we have to identify the element which is less non metallic in the a part from boron and carbon boron is less non metallic from carbon and silicon silicon is less non metallic in the c part from chlorine and bromine bromine is less non metallic element in the further question from self assessment exercise 8.3 we have to rank each set of element in order of increasing non metallic character in the a part from nitrogen fluorine and oxygen nitrogen is least non metallic and fluorine is most non metallic element in the b part from chlorine bromine and iodine iodine is least non metallic and chlorine is most non metallic element In the C part from silicon sulfur and phosphorus silicon is least non metallic while sulfur is most non metallic element we will continue with the part 3